This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. When you hear this, somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. You probably think of this. Somebody once told me. And that's fair. The harmonious marriage between Smash Mouth's 1999 banger All Star and the 2001 cinematic masterpiece Shrek is simply iconic. And the memes it has gone on to inspire are too just. Ah, oh, you know, I don't know the second half of this gesture. I know you do that. What comes after? Someone tell me. <laughs> Shrek and All Star go together like peanut butter and babies. Ah. And it might have you thinking that the best use of All Star in a film is indeed in Shrek, but <laughs> you might be wrong. And you might also be a little stupid. And honestly, I didn't want to bring it up, but people have been talking and you're kind of stinky too, so maybe you should have a shower. You may be surprised to learn that All Star has been used in eight separate films, and you might be really interested in finding out which film used it the best. And I hope both of those things are true, because I've spent a lot of time and work on this video, and I really, just give me like 10 minutes of your time, all right? It's not, you're probably on the toilet, right? Just sit there a little longer and just let me get through this. This was hard. That's the best one! We did it! We did inspect the gadget! Hey now, you're an all-star. It's June 8th, 1999, and while I'm just a couple weeks away from not celebrating my ninth birthday, Californian pop rock band Smash Mouth are about to make history as they release their second studio album, Astro Lounge, featuring one of the greatest songs of all time, All Star. Oh, you don't think that All Star is one of the greatest songs of all time? <laughs> well then explain this, okay? Best song of 1999? That's the same year that Live and La Vida Loca came out, and Mambo Number no. 5, and... An Inspector Gadget! And that's a real study based on real findings that I'll link in the description so you know it's true! Don't read the last line of that article. Smash Mouth's chief songwriter Greg Camp said he wrote All Star in response to the fan mail they were getting from fans off their first album. These kids were bullied and downtrodden and said that their music was making them feel good, so he wanted to write a song that would hype them up even more, that would give them a pep talk when they were feeling down. And damn it, Greg! A star on that one, buddy. You smashed that shit. That is exactly what listening to All Star does whenever I feel bad. Hey now, you're an All Star. Get your game on. Go play. I actually reached out to Greg for a comment on this video, and he didn't see it. What's the point in even being verified? Waste of fucking money. But of course, unless you happen to be both alive and listening to the radio back in 1999, your first exposure to All Star was most likely through Shrek or one of the many memes it has inspired. Some but what if I told you that Shrek wasn't the first movie to use All Star? Shrek wasn't even the second. Shrek wasn't even the third. Did someone say Shrek the first? No! No, they didn't! At least not yet, because the first movie we're going to talk about is this. So Inspector Gadget is not a good movie. It's a remake of a 1980s cartoon about an inspector who is full of gadgets, which, as a cartoon, fun, very silly. In live action, nightmarish dystopian body horror from which I may never emotionally recover. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And now, a word from our sponsor. Oh man, the movie I wanted to show you isn't on Netflix anymore. Not Milky Mills 4. Yeah, Milky Mills 4. No. Oh, wait. Why don't you just check American Netflix? And how, pray tell, do you propose I circumvent the mild inconvenience of the vast cerulean ocean that separates us from those distant lands? Ah, but with a humble VPN, of course. A VPN? Be precise in your speech, dear brother. I speak only of a virtual private network. You sordid ass. I beseech you to make a mere modicum of sense. Tis a network. That is private. And virtual. You know none of what you speak, do you? I must admit I haven't a clue. And yet despite your ignorance, you dare insist upon my adoption of this unfathomable technology. Please, good sir, I beg of your mercy. Nay, continue your prophetizing. Enlighten me on the further virtues of this surf shark. It offers protection from malware and ne'er-do-well hackers should they seek to pilfer your data or browsing habits. I fear not their pilfering, for my data is chaste. Are you so soon to forget your indulgence in milky Milfs one, two, and thrice. Clay-brained loiter sack, your impudence knows no bounds. Entertain the boundless possibilities, connectivity without limit, an ever-shifting IP, and anonymity from the heavens themselves. You dim-witted shill, you speak of sorcery reserved for the gods. Mortal men are unfit to wield such power. Nay, dear brother, for we too can obtain these divine gifts. How? How may we reach such heights? Tell me, I... 
beg of you, Sir Shark may be yours with a mere click of the link in yonder description. Tis truly that simple? Nay. You must also enter code TOMSCARFRIENDS for 83% off plus free moons without charge. You have my undying thanks. Speak no more of it. Edward, I must admit that such moments of heightened intensity have stirred within me feelings I knew not that I felt. Would you, perchance? Oh, it says Milky Mills 4 is on Disney+. Plus. Noise. Our main character starts the movie off as John Brown, a well-meaning but dangerously incompetent security guard who quite literally dreams of being a cop. Dangerously incompetent, you say? Let's get this man a gun! After being doused in fuel and set on fire, an insanely brutal way of dispatching someone in a Disney movie, his comatose body is submitted to the gadget program, involuntarily, I might add, wherein all of his organs are scooped out and replaced with, you guessed it, gadgets. It's basically Robocop, but ethically worse because he wasn't even already an agent of the state. He was just some horrifically injured guy, incapable of consenting, who was turned into a nightmarish thing. It's a Disney-fied deus ex. I never asked for this. So anyway, now he is someone's property and can be turned off at will. I am not even convinced he is alive by conventional definitions. He is just a thing. He's just a thing. I think one of my favorite scenes in the movie is when he's shown the deeply unimpressive gadget suit for the first time, which is quite literally just a coat and a hat. And he responds with such intense reverence saying, the gadget suit, which kind of implies that this is an established thing already in this universe. Did this TV show exist? Was it real in this universe? I mean, they acknowledge that they're in a Disney movie, so anything is possible. It's a Disney movie! The villain of this movie, who is worth one quarter of a Twitter, makes an evil version of Inspector Gadget for reasons, and honestly, he's awesome. I'm immediately on his side. I love this guy. He's so cool. He he absolutely fucks. Although, the shot of him regurgitating a tarantula is one of the most unsettling things I think has ever been committed to film. This is a children's movie. The stakes get insanely and immediately high when, in between scenes, the evil gadget basically brings about the apocalypse, so they respond quite logically by decapitating him and throwing his still living head into the water, effectively drowning him. Because again, this is a kids movie for kids. And then the movie has like five post credit scenes, so... Take note, Marvel, step your game up. But this video isn't about Inspector Gadget, it's about All Star. So where was All Star in this movie? Well, there's a little 10 second scene where they're driving along in the gadget mobile and they're dancing to some music and it's all star. Hey now, you're all star. Get the show on, get paid. And given that this film came out only a month after All Star hit the radio, they did not film this scene with All Star in mind. It was just popular at the time they were editing it, so they just dropped it in. This scene would have worked with probably any song. But it does have a dog dancing to All Star, and for that reason alone, I give it two All Stars out of five, planting it firmly in the C tier. Next! I am the Waffler. Waffle Man! Before the MCU, before the Snyderverse, hell, even before the boys, there was Mystery Men. Based on the 1980s flaming carrot comics, it tells the story of a bunch of wannabe crime fighters that form their own sad superhero team. And I mean sad in the sense that they're like pathetic, not depressed. That's just the start of Endgame. Funny joke. <laughs> You've got a guy who gets really strong when he's really angry, clearly inspired by She-Hulk. You've got a culturally appropriating fork thrower. You've got a guy who turns invisible, but only when no one's looking. You've got a guy with a shovel. You've got a guy who farts real good. I don't know what this guy does, but then you've got the bowler. Now, no joke, I love the bowler. The telepathic skull of her father encased in a sentient bowling ball. I would unironically read the shit out of that comic. I would watch the hell out of that movie. Please give me that movie instead of this movie. Please stop giving me this movie. <laughs> Listen to the sound the bowling ball makes. Mm, it's so good. I love the bowler. I really do. Bowler fan cam. To put it lightly, Mystery Men is very tonally strange. It's stuck in the middle of the grimdark superhero era, but it still very much wants to have a pussy Pee Wee Herman fart a lot. 
This death scene is very cool though. But before I talk about how All Star features in this movie, I wanna talk about how this movie features in All Star. Inspector Gadget may have pipped them to the post by slipping All Star into the edit, but Mystery Men very much staked their claim by having the music video to All Star be a sort of tie-in to the movie, kinda. They didn't actually get any of the actors from the movie to appear in the music video beyond some weird, totally convincing body doubles, but they do utilize footage and locations from the movie pretty effectively, and, you know, it works. But at this point, I feel like more people have seen the music video to All Star, and therefore the scenes from Mystery Men in this music video than have seen the movie itself, making Mystery Men more of an All Star spin-off at this point than anything else. So if the movie and the music video are so intertwined, you'd kind of have to assume that it plays a pretty significant role in the film, right? Right? It's false. No way. Not this time. Okay, we've got a montage of the characters mastering their abilities. This would be a pretty great time to use All Star and here it comes. And there it goes. They use it for a few seconds, just a bit of the chorus, and then they hard cut to the outro. That was it? Oh, okay, to be fair, it does come back at the very end of the movie for the final shot transitioning us into the credits, but it's just so underutilized. Give it to us for the whole montage, for the celebration of these characters embracing their abilities. Give it to us in the climactic scene as they overcome adversity. Don't just give us 10 seconds here and then a reprise for the outro. It's not enough. Give this song its respect, damn it! So while it was, in theory, an effective placement, it's just so underutilized, but at the very least, they do use the song twice. So I give it three all-stars out of five and plant it firmly in the B tier. So, Digimon the movie. Ah! 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 Oh, Jesus Christ. I don't remember what video I talked about my relationship with this fucking nightmare of a show Angela Anaconda in, but the jump scare, the fucking terror I endured when I popped in the DVD of this movie, completely forgetting that it starts with a freaky little tie-in with Angela Anaconda. Have I, I told you that I once brought a kid home from school and an episode of Angela Anaconda was on TV. He told his mum I showed him demonic cartoons and I was banned from playing with him ever again. I fucking hate Angela Anaconda. God damn it! Elliot would like me to quantify that the kid I brought home from school was, we were in the same year. I didn't just find a child at school and show him. I knew this kid. We were also kids. I was also kid. <laughs> Digimon the movie is... Flashing colors and sounds. It is a near incomprehensible fever dream. My understanding of the behind the scenes of this movie is clearly Pokemon had released their movie. It was at the height of its popularity and Fox was scrambling to capitalize on that. So they took a bunch of unreleased in the West Digimon short films, cut them up, dubbed a plot over them and released this. And I remember it somewhat making sense as a child, but watching it now, it's just some stuff and things that happen, and it just feels like no one gave a shit. It's very funny at points. They have some banger jokes that are on par with, like, ghost stories. Are more friends coming over? I'll make three bean salad. <sighs> Nobody's coming over, Mom. Oh, um, that's all right. I only have two beans anyway. Get over it. Okay. I need to see the chicken that egg came out of. Oh, can I just go one video without a reference to a goddamn cloaca? And this guy? Chocolate Mon? That seems like a hate crime. Speaking of the Pokemon movie, fuck Mewtwo in his weird little privilege doesn't exist speech wherein he says, it doesn't matter how you were born, anyone can do anything. That's rich coming from you, Mewtwo. You have god powers. You're telling a Caterpie it can achieve anything it wants? It is a bug. Fuck you. There isn't much more to say about this movie. They defeat one of the villains by emailing it loads of photographs of children, and it also teaches you that getting in the back of strangers' vans is a good idea. I will say that it has the single best soundtrack of any movie ever. I bought a CD of it for this video, but it didn't arrive. So Elliot, please, please put the Digimon soundtrack CD in my hands. Thank you. You're welcome. You did it, right? Yep. Okay. Right, Thanks, man. I trust you. But hey, it's a fun, colorful kids movie about wacky talking monsters, and All-Star is a jubilant, 
upbeat little romp. I'm sure they can slip this in perfectly with these. Oh, no, they put it. They put it at the end of the movie while the character is somberly remembering his dead Digimon. Digimon never really died. Their information just gets reconfigured. Hey now, you're an all star. Get your game on. Go play. One all star out of five. D for Digimon. Oh my God, somebody out there! Now, weirdly enough, I'd never heard of Go Tigers, a documentary about an American high school football team, but IMDb assured me that All-Star was in the film, and it makes sense. I mean, the name Smash Mouth is based off an American football term, and also All-Star was being used at pretty much every football game at the era this movie was made. So how bad could it be? Oh, it's about a cult. This film is about a cult. Proudly and uncritically, they say, <laughs> this is like a cult. Football is more than a sport. It's a cult. And then they just go on like everything's normal. It's about one high school football team and the town that surrounds it and how they have pretty much nothing else going for them. So they put all of their pressure and expectations and money into this team. They slash the school budget, no school books, no school buses, just all football, all the time. There are some interviews from people being like, this really sucks. You're completely ostracized from all of your peers if you're not part of the football, unless they, unless they share your views. But the rest of the film is like, football, we love, we love to football. And it's weird. And there's some dogs having sex in the mood. Just get another take, frame out the dogs having sex. Why, why is that in there? Oh, this movie could have said something, but it didn't. And the only thing I learned from it was the concept of red shirting, where basically they just hold back American middle school students for a year so that by the time they enter high school, they're physically just bigger, older, stronger than the other kids. And when they put them on the football teams, they'll just do better. Wild. What? What? Ah! <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I'm here for All Star. And I realized very quickly on that if I was going to feel the full effectiveness of the all-star scene in this movie, I needed to get invested in the subject matter. So I chose to care about this team and their journey and their football season. And I gave it my all for 108 minutes of my fucking life did I watch this movie. And I thought, okay, they're training. Is this where we're going to get all-star? We ain't started our first game yet, you know what I mean? No, apparently not. All right, well, they're coming out of the football game. Are we just going to hear all-star in the background and that's going to count? Welcome to Pop. Brown Tiger Stadium. No, no, we're not going to hear it there either. All right, okay, here's the big game. The big get. The this is what the whole movie's been about. Can they win the big? Oh my God, they won the big game. Time for All Star. Nope. Sad piano music and choirs over shots of celebration. This is where the All Star goes. L listen to this. Now with All Star. Hey now, you're an All Star. Get your game on. Go play. Isn't that so much better? But all right, fine. We're saving All Star for the credits. I guess it'll be some nice like. Oh, that was feel. It's not in the credits. Okay, well sometimes credits have two songs. Maybe it'll be the. It's not in the credits at all. It's not in the fucking movie. I watched the whole. I watched the whole movie and it's not in the movie. IMDb was just wrong. I imported this from America. I will never get those 108 minutes of my life back. Zero all stars out of five. Disqualified. Fuck. Fuck. The next thing I'm about to say is for one person only. So if you're the person who adds all of my videos to IMDb, come here. Come here. Come here. First of all, Thank you, that's really nice. Secondly, please remove the all-star credit off of the Go Tigers IMDb page. This fact has been parroted in so many different articles and sources I found that I had no reason to suspect the song wasn't in the movie. Please fix this, make the madness end. Only you can do it. I'm begging you, please. Thank you again. All right, moving on. <laughs> All right, it's finally time for Rat Race. This movie is my ace in the hole. If anything is going to dethrone Shrek, it's going to be this movie. It's it's fun, it's quirky, it's upbeat. It's got an all-star cast. <laughs> Do you see what I did there? Do you? You don't? Wow, they really are stupid, aren't they?
The basic premise of this movie is that a super wealthy guy and his super wealthy friends bring together a group of strangers and task them with racing across the country to see who can get to a grand prize of $2 million first. And they watch them squabble and fight and they place bets on them. And it's basically Squid Game were it a comedy movie. And oh my God, I hope Mr. Beast never sees this movie. Please do not tell him about it. Now, when I said this movie has an all-star cast, I wasn't just saying that for the pun. It's got Whoopi Goldberg. It's got John Cleese. It's got Mr. Mr. Bean. And I'm not just saying Mr. Bean to diminish Rowan Atkinson's body of work. He is essentially just playing an Italian Mr. Bean in this movie. And at one point his character kind of molests a baby. It's very silly and wacky. I can feel you, Eddie Apparently Rowan's character was originally intended to be a Chinese diplomat. And I just want to say I'm really glad they didn't go in that direction. Because I don't feel like he'd have done that character justice, you know? I don't think that was in his range. Also, Sex Pest Cuba Gooding Jr. is in the movie. His fun little character trait is that he is transphobic. And at one point, he th thinks he's misgendered someone, but he hasn't. But it's still, like, kind of icky because the woman has short hair. And then at another point in the movie, he thinks he's talking to a lady... But then she's got a deep voice and I, so he crashes a bus because he just can't help but be grossed out by it. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> this movie is also violently pre 9-11. There is just so much stuff in this film that is alien to us these days. One character just drives onto the runway of an airport and just does a little bit of terrorism. And you could do that back then, you know, as a treat. It was totally fine. People are in helicopters crashing into stuff. Di this is the world that we no longer live in, and I'm disappointed by that. Couldn't have Toy Story 2 these days, they'd be shot by snipers. But for the most part, I do genuinely really enjoy this movie, and the way they incorporate All-Star is just awe. Oh, again, I do not understand how that hand gesture works. At the end of the movie, our ragtag collective of protagonists have finally obtained the grand prize of $2 million, and they so wonderfully have decided to share it amongst themselves. Ah, oh, that's nice, but oh, what's this? It turns out they have somehow found themselves on stage in the middle of a Smash Mouth charity gig, and they albeit reluctantly, decide to give up all the money they've just obtained for charity and Smash Mouth then play All-Star. And it's a great time. Everyone's singing, everyone's dancing. Cuba Gooding Jr. is there. It's lovely. Th this guy plays a sick-ass harmonica solo that's unique to this version of All-Star. And it's really good. Ignore the fact he's playing on Hitler's harmonica. I won't explain how that showed up in the movie, but it's great. <laughs> Unfortunately, the version of All-Star that they play is just a little bit rushed and, dare I say, a little bit flat. Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. They're for denying us the full glory of the All-Star experience. It is so, so close to perfect, but it just falls a modicum, a mere modicum short devastatingly so. So all I can do is give Rat Race four All-Stars out of five and plant it right there on A tier. Just short of that elusive S tier. But damn it, if it doesn't feel good. Mmm. <laughs> you look at these kids who are selling drugs. They're selling drugs for the money. Let me tell you something. I could have filmed this video an entire month ago if it weren't for Flunked. This 50-minute documentary on the American education system was so hard to get a hold of. I had to find a copy on eBay and order it from America and get a DVD player that would work. It cost me like 50 pounds just to watch this movie, and I do not have enough to say about it to justify that expense. To be fair though, after watching Go Tigers, I was pretty ready to watch an entire documentary on how deeply fucked up the American education system was, but in all honesty, it just didn't really have much to say. My favorite thing about it though is this guy who says this. Minorities need something and it's called structure and discipline. Which is pretty wild. And also he talks about how schools desperately need someone who can help them budget and manage their finances. What we need to do is we need to learn how to budget what we're given. And when I looked him up, he got kicked out of education because he was laundering money out of his schools to make himself rich. Goddamn, that was beautiful.
But how do they work in All-Star? Well, at one point in the movie, they say they were looking for an All-Star lineup of teachers, and then they play a montage of teachers over the song All-Star. And while it's pretty mid, I gotta give them points because fuck yeah, teachers. Even if some of them do launder money from time to time. As a treat. Hey now, you're an All-Star. Get your game on, go play. So not a great movie, but an amicable sentiment because fuck yeah, teachers, I guess. I give it three all-stars out of five and I whoosh, slap it in B tier. Didn't need to do that. That was weird. <laughs> it's hideous. Oh, that's not very nice. It's just a donkey. Yeah, Shrek wins. Hey now, you're an all-star. Get your game on. God damn it. I really wanted to learn something new with this video, but Shrek just dominates the competition. Starting the movie with All-Star sets the tone so perfectly. It's so fun and feel good. And you're like, yeah, Shrek, your life is perfect. I don't want things to change either. Uh, oh. Shrek's a bit weird though, right? Like Princess Fiona has been eating people the entire time she's been living in that castle. We see that the dragon has been cooking knights and we know that Fiona's been in that tower for a really long time so I have to assume that the dragon is also feeding her. Argo, she's been feeding her knights, which is cannibalism. The, the Princess Fiona is a cannibal. That's... Huh? And speaking of the dragon, yeah, we think she eats Lord Farquaad, but we see that he's alive in her stomach at the end of the film. And you know what that means? It means it's Vor. There's Vor in Shrek. There's Vor in Shrek. And okay, Disney, you can spend the past 10 years being like, oh, we've finally done some good gay rep. And they just put like a couple in the background that they cut out for certain countries. Whereas DreamWorks has been slipping it under your noses all this time. Big Bad Wolf? Check him out at the end, holding hands with this little sexy god. Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. That's some great background rep. Write some articles about that, pink news. <laughs> but yeah, fuck it. Five all-stars out of five. S tier for Shrek. Oh, what's that? The S was the Shrek logo the whole time? We always knew it was going to end up this way, didn't we? to get yourself a pair of jammies. And just to be thorough, a rendition of All Star also appears in Shrek the Third, performed by a high school band. <laughs> Two All Stars out of five, C tier. Job done. Only shooting stars break the mold. <sighs> I'm really sorry. I wasted all of our time with this video. I spent hours watching this movie and you gave me your precious pooping time and we learned nothing new. I'm such an idiot. But when we started this video, we all thought that All Star was best used in Shrek and well, now we know, you know? It's an informed opinion. We've done our research. We've grown and we have learned so maybe it wasn't a waste of time and energy after all maybe maybe this really is my all-star moment yeah hey now you're an all-star get your game on go play hey now you're a rock star get the show on get it all that glitters is gold only shooting stars What a concept, I could use a little fuel myself And we can all use a little check The gifts start coming and they don't stop coming Back to the rules and I hit the ground running Did it make sense not to let for fun? Your brain gets smart but your head gets dumb So much to do, so much to see, so what's wrong with